Hi, this is your host Bhartia and welcome to the 2023 prediction series here at TF Fire. And today we have with us once again Ram Iyengar, Chief Evangelist at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Ram, it's great to have you back on the show. Hi Swapnil, nice to be back too. Of course, I'm going to ask you to share your predictions, but before that, quickly tell us uh, a bit about Cloud Foundry Foundation, the project, and its importance in today's more or less like Kubernetes-centric world. Cloud Foundry continues to work well and work very well for a lot of organizations that have uh, large workloads that they're uh, looking to platformize and consume. And it still provides the best-in-class developer experience that it promised a decade ago. So in terms of realizing that promise, Cloud Foundry doesn't have a parallel yet. And we're seeing continued rise in terms of adoption, in terms of the Cloud Foundry installation bases and uh, the sizes of the developer teams that use and consume Cloud Foundry continue to grow which I think is a great positive and something to really look forward to in terms of maintaining in the year to come. That being said, there's also a raft of different projects that are coming out from the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Thanks, you know, in big part to our community, our very active community of contributors. Uh, There were two sort of pivotal ones being Corifi, which is a PaaS, that abstracts Kubernetes and provides a Cloud Foundry layer over uh, Kubernetes, supported ably by what are known as Paketo build packs, which take over the whole process of creating the containers and actually getting them ready as immutable artifacts to be deployed. So there are a lot of things, uh, you know, something old, something new (laughs) to really look forward to uh, in terms of the foundation itself. Perfect. Uh, thanks for that. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and tell us which what predictions you have for 2023. So my main areas where, where I see a lot of investment and activity going forward are in the areas of security. In particular, I imagine two areas. The first one being zero trust uh, strategies and the second one being a play on software supply chain security. So the reason I emphasize on these two is if you consider zero trust with Kubernetes being open and with a large part of the CNCF ecosystem obviously being open and Cloud Foundry sharing that open source ethos with all of these projects, it exposes a fairly large attack surface uh, if you think about it, right? the network design, the workloads that are sitting there are all open and susceptible to any kind of attack. And so it really becomes mission critical that we are able to implement zero trust architecture across these kind of deployments and to be able to sign them during deployment and make a play using projects such as SigStore and the Salsa, Google Salsa supply chain levels for software artifacts projects and have all of these things work in tandem, work well, and be able to deliver software that really delivers on the outcomes as opposed to trying to deliver more risk and playing the entire risk factor down. Now, a consequence of having this focus on security and this focus on compliance is encouraging consumers to move in the direction of a managed pass that is, you know, slightly opinionated, even if it is in terms of the security and in terms of the compliance and all of these areas. And so having a paved path from developer machine to production is starting to become more critical and more convenient for a lot of the platform operators that are using Kubernetes. And so irrespective of whether folks are you know, using Kubernetes or if they even opt like something like bare metal or an older fashioned VM based path, the role of pass tools will find new meaning in this world that is oriented towards security and compliance. And so that's where I see Cloud Foundry being very critical in terms of filling that space and helping developers make an informed 
and a technologically advanced choice irrespective of what infrastructure mode that they uh, choose and i think that one of the areas where the cncf will also see some strengthening this year is the entire pas subsection of its landscape so there seem to be a few entrants who are in the space and i think there'll be a lot more to come both in terms of the quality of the entrants that are there and even in terms of the number of entrants and in terms of the quantity first of all thanks for sharing these predictions uh, tell us a bit about what 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 is going to be the focus for the cloud foundry community for the foundation for the project in 2023 i think we're going to stick very strongly to the basics swapnil in terms of what we're going to do in the upcoming year so skip the complex keep it fast help developers scale keep application deployment secure and those are the principles that you know cloud foundry was built on and those are the areas that i think we'll continue to focus on we'll also work very hard on making these projects more relatable in the sense that we'll get them to work with all kinds of different infrastructure providers all the different tools that are available adjacent to this golden path to production that we are promising and in general like i mentioned focus on two of the foundations more newer more recent projects which are perifi and paketo meant to simplify the entire platformization over kubernetes now what are the challenges that you see will be there in 2023 and what role do you see cloud foundry will play in helping users customers navigate through some of these challenges i think a general sort of uh, challenge with open source software is uh, going to be managing ambiguity and i think that's going to be a continued trend in 2023 as well as we start to grow as we see more deployments as we see more contributors come in there's obviously all of this herding that needs to be done uh, that i think is uh, quite inevitable um i think one of the other challenges that we face as an open source community again is to bring critical visibility into all of these projects now i could go on and on about you know how many different projects we have and how cool they are and things like that but uh, getting that right amount of traction i think is going to be a challenge for the community we're working very hard at it uh, we're very hopeful of results um, and you know we we obviously have uh, a great community uh, to work with that have always helped us solve problems in the past whether they've been technical or not and uh, you know we continue to bank on the community uh, for something uh, like this too and like i mentioned a couple of times before i think consolidation around the pas space and the general open source software space around a paved path towards production is is something that is going to happen um, it, it's kind of inevitable and i think because of the decades long worth of experience that cloud foundry has behind it and the community brings i think cloud foundry is going to be a very key part of the success that a lot of the uh, consumers and adopters are going to experience ram thank you so much for taking time out today and of course share these predictions with us and as well i would love to have you back on the show thank you sure sopnel it was a pleasure as always